Aaron, do you have a sense of how close we may be to, to having a deal struck? It's impossible to know. It's a four and a half page text. I haven't seen it. Uh, you haven't seen it. Uh, the Americans, the Qataris, the Egyptians, the Israelis, and the Palestinians have seen it. Um, the Israelis, at least the War Cabinet, has approved it. It was based on an Israeli proposal. Actually, it was an Israeli proposal. Hamas has now come back with a response to the Qataris. Uh, the Israelis, an official was quoted basically saying it was a rejection. I think the real question is, is this a yes but that would be grounds, a reasonable yes but on the part of Hamas, or that might prompt further negotiation, or is it just a no? The first would create a serious challenge for the uh, Israeli prime minister and the right-wing government. The second would, uh, would provide him with a way out. So I don't think we know right now. Um, my sense is that um, Hamas is not in a hurry, uh, and they're going to want guarantees and assurances on any number of elements within this, uh, within the president's laying out of an Israeli proposal. These two parties, of course, don't speak to each other directly. They have some goals which they describe as absolute, which are probably unacceptable to the other side. So there, there has to be some room for compromise. Uh, speaking of rooms, you've been there in the past when the United States is involved in negotiations. Give us a sense, as best you can imagine, of, of what the Americans' role would be, especially right now, as uh, it sounds like you know Hamas is demanding changes. I mean, I've participated in a lot of negotiations, but this is not a typical traditional conventional negotiation. I mean, there are three reasons that make this very curious and, and fraught. Number one, the principal Palestinian decision maker, Yahya Sinwar, is ensconced somewhere uh, holding hostages. Uh, number two, the U.S. has never really participated uh, in a negotiation with a terrorist organization with which it has absolutely no contact. And the third issue is all of this is being done indirectly via, via intermediaries, the Qataris and the Egyptians, both of whom who have their own interests um, in, in, in essence, uh, and, and make, makes it even more difficult, it seems to me. So again, it's not a conventional negotiation where American pressure and persuasion can be applied directly to both parties. Uh, and that makes it extremely difficult. The other reality is negotiations work when both parties in a are in a hurry. And I have to say, in, in terms of, if I would order them, in terms of urgency, there's no urgency on Hamas's part. There's little or none on the part of the government of Israel, certainly the prime minister. Uh, and, and the party that is in the most hurry is the Biden administration. And that, in a negotiation, that is a very bad situation to be in. The worst thing you can do is send a signal to them, your negotiating partners, partners that you want this deal more than they do. And that and happens to be the case, sir. In a divided America, with the presidential election coming up in a few months' time, with, with you know, camps in the United States, some are resolutely pro-Israeli, some who are uh, absolutely, uh, you know, behind the Palestinians, uh, would the American negotiators, and presumably the answer is yes, feel that kind of political pressure? Um, yeah, but let's be, be clear about one thing. The election is November 5. And neither you nor I nor anyone, frankly knows precisely how Americans are going to vote. And uh, anything in an election that may be determined by three states, Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania, with fewer than 100,000 votes, anything can turn it. Gaza, uh, a Trump uh, conviction as a felon, a Trump sentencing, the debate on June 27 between Biden and the, pres and the uh, former president, anything can turn this election, including numbers of Americans who are angry and disillusioned with the president's policies on Gaza. One minute left. Uh, this is a fast-moving story, and things may change even between the time we're talking now and, uh, and later on tonight. But what are you looking for uh, over the next few hours? I mean, I really would like to see a, a, um, an objective evaluation of what Hamas has come back with. 
Uh, and I think uh, th that'll be key. There's a difference between a yes, but that is really a no and a yes, but that is reasonable in which there is room for continued negotiation. And that's what I, I, I'll be looking to see actually what the American reaction is to um, to what Hamas has delivered to the Qataris. Aaron David Miller, a real pleasure speaking with you. Thanks. Thanks, Ian. Pleasure.